and the vice president and go on down into the bowels of the intelligence and, and a whole host of areas to get to the truth. We don't know the truth. And how advanced is this ballot initiative? Well, it's very serious right now because there's windows. When you do an initiative, there's a window that you have to comport to. And so they need uh, upwards of 50,000 signatures to be real safe. And they've only got 10,000 signatures. And so they've got about four weeks left. They have left. to all be New Yorkers? Yes. Oh, yeah, they do. And I can't even, I was going to try to go out and collect signatures, but legally I can't. So uh, I'm going to be part of a press conference. And I've done several initiatives myself as a sitting senator. And as you know, with my efforts with uh, the National Initiative, I believe in this concept. What the government can do, the people can do through the initiative process. And so we've got to get those signatures in the next 40, uh, 30, 40 days. And it's going to depend on people hearing my voice, hearing you, because you've spoken about this before and the importance of this. And so there's a telephone number I want to give, 646-537-1755. That's 646-537-1755. And that's a hotline. And at today at St. Mark's Church, that's at 2nd Avenue and 10th Street. Here in New York City. Here in New York City. People will come there. We're we're going to have a get-together at, uh, at 7.30. It's going to be reception. There'll be some light refreshments. And then we'll be talking about this. Sign the guest book. Give us your address. And then what you can do is log on to our website. And that website will permit you to uh, download a petition. And then you'll be able to circulate the petition. But it's key to call this phone number. Mike Ravel, did you ever raise this, for example, in the debates that you were able to participate in? About the commission? Uh, not this particular commission, because <laughs> I, I was, keep in mind, I was shut out in September of uh, 07 after I had challenged the Democratic Party and Hillary particularly on Lieberman II resolution, which gave George Bush the power to invade Iran, which is still a threat that looms over our heads. I was with Ramsey Clark over the weekend, and Ramsey joins me and feeling very, very frightened over the possibility that George Bush may go crazy again and, and do something significant between now and the term. Remember when Sarkozy asked him, well, Mr. President, you did a, you know, you've done a fine term of others. He said, I'm not done yet. Well, Mike, not done. What's he got in his mind? What more could he do? Senator Cravel, when you say we don't know the truth about 9-11, what do you mean? Government, 90 percent of what the government does is held secret. Uh, it's a whole cult. And, uh, and, and, and that's the thing that is really strangling our democracy, that we just don't know what's going on. And so you need to rip off the scab and see the wound of the, what the government is damaging. And, and so it, it's a cult. And, uh, and it, it, I, I don't know how I can phrase it. I've written about the subject. When I was here, uh, best example I can give you. When I was 23 years old, I was in a communications intelligence service. I was an adjutant of the Communications Intelligence Service. And I was a top secret control officer. I was 23 years old. Now I'm 42 years old. I'm a United States senator. And I could not go in and take notes and read the Pentagon Papers because they were under guard in the Senate. Now, does it get any stupider than that? And that, and I didn't even go in when when that was the Nixon sent them to the House, sent them to the Senate, and you, no staff could read it, <coughs> a senator could read it, couldn't even take notes. I mean, we are so steeped in this. And when you hear, and uh, keep this in mind, Amy, any member of the Congress could release any secret about the government's activities right today, because the court case, the Supreme Court ruled in my case five four that a senator under or a House member under the speech and debate clause of the Constitution of the United States could not be held accountable. I was talking to Congressman Moran, and he had made the statement, well, you know, George Bush is about to do something in Iran. I said, my God, say something about it. They can't touch you. And Jim Moran of Virginia. Of Virginia, and uh, who's, who's a tough hombre. 
do you believe there's another set of Pentagon papers around 9-11 and Iraq? There's no question about it, but how do you get your hands on it? If some, see, not every, there's not that many Ellsbergs around. We've got Sybil Edmonds and others who, what, what people learn, and Ellsberg knew this walking into it. He was trying to find somebody in Congress. George McGovern wouldn't do it. Uh, Fulbright wouldn't do it. He needed the, um, the umbrage, the legal status of a member of Congress doing it. He didn't know I was alive until <laughs> the Times wouldn't act or the Post wouldn't act. Then all of a sudden there's this freshman who's out there filibustering the draft. And so he called me up, would you, would you release? Of course I'd release it. And I don't know, people say, well, you're so courageous. I'm not courageous. This is just the way I'm made. And that's the reason why I admire this young kid, this Shiru that you just had on. This is, this is what makes a difference in society when people step up at any level of life. You ran for the Democratic nomination uh, yes. for president. Right. Then you just lost the uh, libertarian, libertarian <laughs> nomination for right. president to Bob Barr. Yeah. Why did you run there? And As a libertarian? Well, very simple. The libertarian is not a war party. The Democratic Party is a war party. The Republican Party is a war party. My God, you got to look around. The Green Party is not a war party. The libertarians are not a war party. And I fancy myself very much when people would say, well, Gravel is a misfit. He was a maverick. What does that mean? It means that I didn't fit into the Democratic Party. Now, there's a lot of things that I like about what they do, but there's a lot more things that I like about what the libertarians, I believe in freedom. Who are you endorsing for president? Well, I'm, I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm going to vote, obviously, for the lesser of evils, but I'm not going to do it. We'll have Ralph Nader on next week, independent candidate for president. What yeah. do you think of well, his I, run? I, I this, like we'll Ralph. have him on this week. Yeah, and I like Ralph. Ralph and I are good friends, as you can tell. He, he's, he wrote the, he wrote the, the forward to my about. book, but he never talked to me about running for president. He's, he was my competitor until I got out of the race. Now I've, I've got out of his way. So, but no, R Ralph is a great, great American. There's no question about it. Uh, his chance of becoming president. But it's a good place to put a protest vote, if you want to put it. Uh, and so uh, we'll see what, what happens. But he, we need people to articulate the alternative. I've not given up. Uh, I'm going to give an account of myself the rest of my life on all these issues. What do you think of another Democratic candidate, uh, Dennis Kucinich, who you were on the uh, debate floor with, introducing these articles of impeachment against President Bush? I think, uh, and of course, uh, Ramsey Clark is leading that battle outside of the Congress. Uh, I think it's important because it sets the stage. It creates an appetite for people, but it's not going anywhere. And I, re I really resent the identity politics that we have today. You know, got to have a woman to be a president or a black person president. That's, that's fine. But I, very candidly, uh, I was very excited when Nancy Pelosi became the speaker. But I'm uh, reflecting on it. I don't know of any woman in Congress, by and large, who's that much different from any male member of Congress. Oh, there's some that are courageous, but a lot of them are just normal. And, and Nancy Pelosi is no different than any male speaker that I've seen in my career. And, and so she's the one that took the impeachment deal off the table. That's a tragic mistake, and I know why they did it. They're playing politics. Now, from my point of view, impeachment is not what George Bush deserves. He deserves to be prosecuted. He and Cheney need to go to The Hague and stand in the dock like they had Milosevic and others. The, what they did was criminal. 4,000 Americans have died as a result of their fraud on the American people. And, and Do you support Vincent Bugliosi, the Charles Manson prosecutor who got him behind bars? His call for, we had him on on Friday, he's written the book. Um, Pre the prosecution of, pres of George W. Bush for murder. Oh, there's no question about it. In fact, I have great regrets over the fact that we never put uh, Richard Nixon in jail. I mean, everybody around him went to jail, and, uh, and, and he got off and rehabilitated himself. I, the sooner we put a president or a vice president or a secretary in jail for crimes that they commit against humanity, the sooner leaders will shape up. 
We're going to have to leave it there. Senator Mike Gravel, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Former Democratic Senator from Alaska, who served two terms um, and ran for President of the United States uh, this past year. Coming up, we go to California, where dozens of gay couples across, the ca across California have tied the knot. We'll be speaking to a couple who will get married live on Pacifica radio station KPFK on Friday. Stay with us. Thank you.